I'm sitting down because I've been standing all day and I'm a bit tired. Um, and, and I'd just like to uh, begin by sharing just a very short story in a way that, um, that some of you might be able to relate to. Um, I've done a couple of overseas experiences in my time, and um, that might be a dying tradition, I think, amongst Kiwis. I'm not sure. I don't have teenage kids who want to go overseas. But um, one of the questions that came up for me was, was, where is home? What do I call home, particularly when I'm overseas? Yeah, What do I sort of whakapapa back to? And um, I guess in terms of my ancestry, you know, um, uh, uh, ko Nati Raukoa Te Iwi is, is, my, is, my, is my tribe. And, um, but I'm part of, part of a, a generation that's been disassociated from, from, from a Māori side of things. And so it's, it, it's still a journey back for me. And uh, so the question is, where's my home? Because I grew up, you know, with very sort of uh, Pākehā parents. And, um, and uh, what I was reminded of today is, is, is um, that where, where I find, where I call home, is actually a place, I think, where Pākehā and Māori tend to meet, which is in the New Zealand bush. Yep, so when I need to feel like um, I'm at home, I go deep into the New Zealand bush, and I listen, and I sit still. And I wait to hear what might be calling me. And that was helpful to know that, um, that I had a place that I could call home in the New Zealand bush, having shifted around as a kid <laughs> most of my life. So, so I'm going to invite you into that, into that sort of that, that deep stillness, that place um, from which to reflect on and, and, and um, see if you can hear what's calling you. And, um, and we've been on quite a journey over the past eight or nine hours, probably a bit longer actually for some of us. And um, there's been a whole lot of information. There's been a whole lot of telling. There's been a whole lot of sharing. There's been things to engage with. So one of the first things I'm going to invite you to do, so I just, I like to be quite methodical in how I do things. So I just, so this is the aim of the session today. Yeah, so I'm sure, oh. What's going on? Oh, it's still up there. Yeah, is to share new insight. So I think, you know, from what's been shared, you would have, like, heard things and it would have sparked you off and probably you need to reflect on them to integrate them into your experience. So it's about na naming those things that have kind of sparked you, have, got, have, have brought new life to the what you're thinking about or the way you're thinking. And the premise I'm basing, basing this session on is really about if we... If we share our in insight, insight, can catalyze new insight to arise in others. It can have a pop effect. And in actual fact, this is, um, this is, this is the power of being in community. Yeah? You don't need to rely on a teacher up the front or an expert up the front to get you to start to develop yourself and start to develop your, and deepen your understanding. It's everyone at the table, everyone in the room can actually help you do that. Yeah, and it might just be a flick of a word or a share of a word or a share of a phrase or a poem. Boom, you know, something sparks, something lights up. So that's what I'm hoping might happen. But, you know, it takes a collective effort, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, um, so if you, you do have something that comes up, um, uh, share it. So I'm just going to, but I'm going to give you an opportunity um, to, to work developmentally over the next, you know, next half hour. So regenerative thinking becomes really easy when you're working with conscious mental energy. If you're feeling a bit tired like myself at, at the moment, it really helps to have an aim to wake you up into what you're actually doing. So my aim at the moment, and this is what I said to the team last night, is to deliver well. Now when I said that I freaked out because <laughs> it was like if you say something like that you're just going to make lots of mistakes, right? Yeah, so... Um, uh, but anyway, it, it's, it's held its course and it's grounding me right now. So take a moment to yourself. Yeah, this is your own personal reflection. And just think about what you'd like to get out of over the next, next 30 minutes, the ne next half hour. Yeah. And just write it down because you might need to refer back to it later. Yeah. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to write that down.
Okay, show of thumbs when everyone's, has anyone got something up? Written something down? Yep, great. Okay. So, um, do what you need to do. You just might want to soften your gaze or close your eyes, but just start to enter into your own space. And I'm just going to walk through the program for the day and note some of the things that, that's, that caught my attention. And as I note these things, just think about what caught your attention during the day. Yep. And start making those connections and those relationships that might lead to some new insight. So we open the day. Um, uh, and um, Rachel <laughs> spoke to um, what hohora meant. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is fantastic. You know, um, she talked about the breath and the wind and the sun. Yep. And then we had PJ from um, Firth. And um, I couldn't think of a more boring subject to talk about. Concrete. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's my experience. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, but what caught my attention was, um, was these five million tyres that kept going into the ground. Yeah. And, um, and what they were doing about it. Yeah. And um, I just thought, wow. Well, there's actually corporations out there that, that give a damn. Yeah, that, that do give a damn. Yeah, and it, of course it's the people in those corporations. But yeah, and then uh, Jerome, Jerome, Jerome came al came along and um, uh, talked about um, yeah about creating a place where everyone wants to live, and this is a minimum of a three year journey. So I um, guess what he what he's saying is that we're going to be running these events for at least three years in all sorts of different forms, probably in all sorts of different cities and with all sorts of different industries. Yeah, and he just mentioned there's a lot of talk about carbon, but it's not working. And then Johnny. Oh, my God. What a bomb. Wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, so... Um, I do sketching on my iPad, right? <laughs> Ran out of space for all the gems that he was sharing. You know, locate it within the kitchen. Wow. Oh, my iPad's just gone flat. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, I, I backed it up on this. Just a sec. Yeah, located in the kitchen, and then um, uh, in a conversation over by the clothes rack, um, when he mentioned Tawa, the, the lovely lady I was talking to said she, the whole room just sort of relaxed. Yeah, there was sort of, everyone sort of breathed out. It's, it's not just about having to do things in project time all the time. Tawa, yeah, Tawa. Yep, and he mentioned, you know, um, under the concrete, um, there's Papa Tuanuku. There's the Awa. Yep. And he talked about one plus one equals three. And he talked about circles and squares. Yeah, that most of us sort of maybe s are stuck in our squares. Yeah. And um, regenerative and matauranga Māori are kind of like two circles creating a binocular vision. And he also said there's hope. We had 800 years of connection of living, living with the land and then 200 years of disconnection. And he mentioned that we're the lucky ones. Overseas, they've had 7,000 years of disconnection, right? So not much to change around, but still really sort of like a tough task um, that he's speaking to there. Yeah. And the wahine. Yeah, and their ability to navigate. Wow. Rachel's been navigating really well. That's my experience of what you've been doing today, Rachel. Yeah. And then we've had the Naiferos. Na Naiweros, sorry. I keep putting the P A F Fing it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, Sarah talking about the love of bees and, um, you know, low cost for greater impact. Just wonderful, wonderful hearing that 
of these possibilities. And then Liz Nichols talking about, you know, growing up in Taranaki and um, uh, bringing the mountains and forests into our cities. Yeah. And uh, Lucy Mary sort of mentioning uh, uh, Princess Street and everything that's kind of underground and around and then really introducing us to the Aotanga uh, community space and it's what it's been discovering through Story of Place. And of course, Gecko Trust. I drew a gecko on that one. And then Bill Reed. What did you take from Bill Reed's? What did you take from Bill Reed's sharing? Yeah, he shared so much. The one thing I think I took was cascading regeneration. Yeah, hang in there, he said. It does happen. Hang in there. It does happen. And then we had this uh, <laughs> this wonderful wonderful chair of Te Aroha <laughs> and his speed dating style, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Titaru White. Uh, um, yeah. What he was talking about was pretty serious, but he just, he cracked me up and he said, stay still and stay strong. Yeah. And then we had um, Sadra from Earthbeat and uh, this is a friend I've known for quite a long time. And I've never heard him speak so powerfully. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Yeah. And um, came away with the phrase, yeah, loving and creative defiance. Loving and creative defiance. Yeah. And Debbie with her passion of regenerating the healthcare system. <laughs> Let's help her. Wow, what a what a promise beyond ableness. And um, and and John Brett saying it's oh it's just so easy to do uh, to um, net zero shared efficiency. You just got to try it. It's easy. Okay, mate. I live in a van. I'll give it a go. <laughs> and um, we found a true character, didn't we, in Jules McKinnon. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, yeah, I'd like to taste one of your bacon butties. That's what I took away from that talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just, I, I love the idea that you haven't sold your penthouse space to the highest bidder. And you just said everyone can enjoy it. Oh, I'm like, yeah, wow. I don't think I've ever been up to a penthouse space, so I'm, do you mind if I come and visit? <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. So that's what I picked up from the day. So take a few moments to, to think about and reflect about what, what you picked up from the day. And, um, uh, and what I'm going to ask you to do is to break off into twos or threes at your tables. Twos is quite good because then you get a bit of uh, time to really listen to each other and share. And um, just talk about, use these questions as guides, but you might have other questions that you want to explore yourself. So, but what were you seeing for the first time? Yeah. What are you seeing in a new way? Something that you've been working with before and it's just, wow, I hadn't thought about it like this. And the last one, you know, the last one, like being in the deep stillness, in the stillness of a deep forest. Yeah. What are you being called to do? So we're in this room, right? And I think Lucy Mary and others pointed out that there's, we're on Papatu, underneath here, there's Earth, Papatuanuku's here, Tamaki Makoto's here, the living systems are here. What are they calling for? What are they calling for us to do? Yeah. So I'll give you 10 minutes to have a, have a conversation in pairs, and then um, what we'll do is open the floor for shared reflection. Your time starts now.
apologies. I feel a bit reticent to, to um, disturb the conversational energy that's going on. Um, I'm speaking somewhere from my mouth. Um, so you know the drill. Um, the floor's open, and we've got a couple of wandering mics. So, um, I'm Jerome, not Mike. <laughs> Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> I've got a few dad jokes. Anyway, um, uh, um, yeah, so there's, there's a couple of wandering mics. And uh, this is just an opportunity to share anything that's, that's come, up, um, come up for you. And just if you need a bit of guidance, um, you know, this is an opportunity to deepen all our understanding. Yeah, so it, it's kind of like a gift to the room if you share what's been illuminated for you. You don't have to use anyone else's voice except your own. Yep. So just speak from the heart. Speak from the puku, the belly. Yep. And your voice is welcomed. Yep. And uh, <laughs> unlike our Naiwero speakers, keep to the point <laughs> as much as you can. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. So the floor's open. Who would like to? Who would like to begin the sharing? Who likes going first? Amanda. Thanks. Um, I, say, I had a wonderful insight when the lady from the Institute of Architects was speaking. And um, that insight was, as a permaculture designer, we're always looking at the, en the energy flows in and out of a site, which is, you know, the wind, the sun, etc. And I suddenly thought, money is just another energy flow. It's, um, in my designs, I don't start with money anymore. I start with all those other things, and then the money comes. If you get the value right and you get the calling right, then the money will just flow. It's just another energy. Mm. Kia ora. Wonderful. My insight. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Did that resonate with anyone? The flowing of money? Oh, I see a few nods. Yep. Oh, here we go. Uh, kia ora, everyone. My name is Lucy. I've just been nominated by Jerome. Um, so, something that stood out for all three of us, we were just talking about it, is the concept of being in time, as opposed to using time as an instrument, like so often we find ourselves rushing through life, so just a reminder to like slow down, stop, and just be, and be with the people, be with the project and the place that you're working with. Good, yeah, great. I think we go around every table. Can we hear? Is it on? Yeah. Oh, it's not on. Okay. Try it now. Try that again. Try it. Hopefully I'll say it better the second time. <laughs> um, something that Bill was saying about how people need to love it um, themselves, and it resonated with me because I've just spent um, a good seven days with Kainga Ora in Mangani talking to Pacifica community members about living at density and none of them really want to live in apartments but um, I think we need to prove it to them that it's an amazing lifestyle so we need to build a really good example and then they, they may see it or see the effects or the amenities that can come with it and learn to love it <laughs> potentially it's another way forward instead of um, the stonewalled approach. Oh, yeah. Um, I was trying to forget my voice. Um, hi, Kia ora, I'm Amanda, and I, uh, I'm an artist that created um, the wallpapers. And oh. don't make me cry. Um, I just wanted to, to carry on from, from you because it really touched me, Bill, talking about love. Um, he's such an academic and he's so experienced um, in the field of the built environment and working with such strategic, um, engineering, brainy types. So it's really encouraging. And what I, what I really hear there is that we need to have courage 
and for us to come back to the heart and the Māori order, um, we're going to have to really love ourselves and that model is inherent in, the, in that three levels and Debbie talked about that. It is about the love and we haven't been able to talk about that. We haven't been able to be spiritual. We haven't been allowed... because those things have come through and um, with Johnny and um, this beautiful Māori order um, teaching. Um. Amanda. That was Amanda. Well, we're going to have somebody from every table, so... Okay, well, I've been volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> My name is John McLean. I'm an architect, and I'm really grateful for that I came along today. I've been a long time coming. I'll just recount we closed our group session a moment ago, so I'll just say what I said then, that for me at the other end of my career now, that I've done it hundreds of times before. I work with community architecture mainly, so I can usually tell my clients what their brief ought to be and what their solution ought to be and go straight to directing. And it was good to be recorrected <laughs> in my old age and experience by Bill to start again with the relationship and the connection and the listening and then discover together, because the potential that you can do together is far greater than your knowledge from what's been successful in the past. That is to be built on, but together you can actually go further. So that's what I gained out of uh, one of the things I gained. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name's Monica Bainbridge from, from Landscape Architect. Um, one thing that one of my takeaways is to challenge myself to ask at the beginning of a project of the development manager or the client what their beliefs and values are for the project and it may be a difficult question um, and it might also encourage me to come to the beginning of the project with those values as well. So, yeah. Kia ora. Um, I've, I've got a volunteer right here. Hi, I'm Izzy. Um, I'm from University of Auckland. I'm studying urban planning. Um, I just really enjoy coming here and meeting all you guys. Special shout out to these two tables for like adopting me today. Um, I didn't know anyone before coming here, so yeah, I'm just really thankful and getting to see all these ideas and like learning from everyone. It's really cool. I'm going to take some back and put them into my site analysis next week. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, excited for the future and urban planning. Hi everyone, I'm Becca from RDT Pacific, a project management consultancy firm and um, something that I took away from today actually from a lot of the speakers is, is just about being brave and, and asking the hard questions and as designers and, and engineers and architects we have the power to change what materials we use, the life cycle and where it ends up. So. You know, we can ask those questions to our suppliers and we can make the changes. We can, they need to produce what we want to make. So we need to be asking those questions and really pushing them. So, yeah. I've, I've always said that project managers are the gatekeepers and they're the most important people. So now they all know, they all know how to regenerate. It's great. Kia ora. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge everyone coming here today and being in this space. Um, biggest thing for me was really breathtaking to be able to hear the speakers, a, like a very diverse range of speakers from different ethnicities, talk about the Māori worldview and their own lingo. Um, that was a really eye-opening thing for me. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see where this um, further develops. And, yeah, look out future. <laughs> 
Tēnā rā koutou katsua, ko te rana pōta tōku inua. He uri a hau o nai tū hoi mōna iwi e rima o te hiku teka. So I'm tribal. I'm tribal and I met Jerome a few years back. In fact, you know, if you do Facebook, it has those reminder things. This day, a couple of years ago, apparently you were doing this. This very day, apparently, a few years ago, I was at Jerome's hui that he hosted in the Bay of Plenty for regenerative introduction, our introduction, uh, to living building systems, and there were hundreds of us there. And I'm one of a movement who really excited about the potential of hemp as a natural building uh, material. And Jerome, bless him, uh, he let our group, and we were such a beginning group at that time, he let our group into the conference that was very much like this one. We had to borrow a table from over the road and an old tablecloth while everybody was sitting up there, um, their areas, like really, really professionally. And Jerome feeling... Uh, feeling the genuine nature of what we all share here in this room allowed our small group in, and that's how I first met Jerome. Jerome is also someone who was instrumental. I don't know how many of you are aware of the Living Green Building in the Bay of Plenty. That won an award. What was that award it won, Jerome? All of that. That's our tribal. That's our tribal hub. This guy was instrumental in, in the construction of that building. And instrumental in weaving lots and lots of different people with lots and lots of different ideas and agendas together under a regime that's really just about love. Old Bill from over in the States today, I had a number of favourite speakers today. Johnny was one because Johnny is, is my relation. <laughs> but was it Bill talking about love? <coughs> We should never, ever, ever undermiss, underestimate the power of love and unity. And this is why I enjoy hanging out with Jerome, because we talk about these concepts, and he's a practitioner of it. And it's very, very nice to meet a whole room of other practitioners of love for a common cause. Kia ora. Kia ora. Yeah, is there anyone else? Rachel, over there. Put your hand up again. Okay. I'll go for the mic. I'll, oh, I'll just jump in. Um, just quickly, um, it's been great. Um, after I did the regenerative course probably two, three years ago, I've lost a bit of track of time. Koi Annette Jones, um, um, uh And what's been fantastic is being able to bring... Um, I think it's called a field or, or other people along from um, I work with to understand some of how I may be approaching things. But what's been real gift is for today is is um, what I enjoy is being um, who can flip from the nested systems from self to family to to then group to then work to the planet and and m moving in and out during the day. And I, I, what I look forward to is being able to do a little bit more of that um, in my um, of that scale shift. Um, during my day to day. Thanks. Awesome. Is there anybody who's just. Go. Thank you, Jerome. Um, my name is Sam. I work for a company called Kovacs Design Furniture. They're a Christchurch furniture manufacturer. They've been around 60 years. They're very much about the heart and soul of creating things here in New Zealand. Um, I, I was coming today. I received an email from Jerome, and why am I here? I don't know. I was really curious just to see what what it would be and, and what the vibe was and what I would learn. The I suppose at some point I wondered if it would be to create bouncy castles out of moss, but um, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> That's a possibility. That is a bit of an out there, yeah. Um, the, the key takeaway, personally, there's a lot of things I've learned today, much of them about heart and soul and what we all do on a day-to-day -day basis, and that word love comes up. From a business perspective, I think it's taking the shift from a, a corporate aspect away from sustainability and into a new, new language called regeneration, which I find quite exciting. So, thank you. So 
So thank. Oh, you got yeah, one we'll more. Stop now. No, no. Stop. Is there anybody who's just itching to say? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes. <laughs> Kia ora. Sorry, I what took going on. Um, I actually just wanted to acknowledge my big takeaway from the day was just the incredible diversity in the room and just looking around. And I know a lot of you, and I've met some others today, um, and even at our table when we tried to look at the Māori Auto Compass, we pretty much had a skill set from the most diverse range of things. And um, for me, that is at the heart of what we're trying to do here. We need all these different kinds of minds, these different ways of thinking, these different skill sets. Um, and it's great to spend a day with artists. It's great to spend a day with engineers, project managers. Big shout out to the project managers in the room. You are the gatekeepers to this work. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Jerome and team, for bringing this incredibly um, diverse range of people. And thank you for the people that have been open-minded to come. Half of the room here are already indoctrinated, and I'm sorry, but you're preaching to the converted. But I want to take my hat off to those that weren't and came as a leap of faith, because um, this is a really special space to be in. And um, kia ora. Thanks. Ah, awesome. Hey, thanks, everyone. For sh oh, you've got someone else? Val. Uh, we might be able to. <laughs> uh, kia ora ko waiau, uh, he mokopuna o te awa tūpua ki Wanganui. Uh, ko Val Pānui toku ingoa, mā tauranga Māori coordinator, Fletcher Building. Um, I have sat here throughout the day going, why was I even sent an email? Other than it said, it has a strong Māori lens. And when I got the email, I went, it's a tick of the box. Mm -hmm. It's a space in my role that I've been trying to work with the organisation to, to uh, don't put us in a box. Don't put our tikanga in a box. Don't put Māori in a box. Where sometimes we do a great job doing it ourselves. Um, but a great takeaway from this today is um, it's a great new space for our tangata tiriti, for our tauiwi that are moving into a te ao Māori space, that for Māori who are connected to their whenua, that are connected to their wai, that are very connected to their whakapapa, is that we've been here. This is just a, a reinvention of the world, uh, a wheel that has always been there for us. Um, but it's also a challenge, I guess, for a lot of us is we're now in a great space to be able to share our tonga where our tonga was taken from us. It's how we actually do that within our respective roles to allow ourselves an opportunity to share. Um, and for, for those that are at the decision-making table is to be open to share our knowledge, to share our kōrero, um, and then be be able to think smarter and be better at, at how we do it. So a lot of stuff that I tend to do and a lot of challenges in my role is don't dictate to me how to be Māori. I already know how to do that. But sit at the table and bring a solution of what that space looks like when you're learning <coughs> our culture. It's just like if I wanted to learn how to speak Japanese, it's the same concept. I have to go and respect somebody else's culture to learn it. So today we've had respect, we've had love, we've had a lot of our cultural values um, on the tables. I guess the challenge is, is what are we going to do as Māori to allow that space to be comfortable for us? And how do we allow our tangata tiriti to be able to sit in that same space as us where often enough they go, I don't understand this, so I don't want to do it, and it comes across differently. So, um, I guess to my business, <laughs> the hoha koha today for me was it was a tick in the box, but the koha out of that hoha is how am I now going to go back to the organisation where I've spent so much time writing in here on how I'm actually going to change up the um, Māori strategy that I've been working on for the last two years to drive it into a big beast of Fletcher building um, is the word regenerative. It, it's, it's something that's new to me, but it's not new to majority of you that are here that sit in that space. So kia ora for the opportunity um, to the organisation, to Firth, um, and to everyone here that works in the space, because I don't. And I've just learnt a lot today. 
um, to actually take back to the organisation and go and put a cultural lens on it. Kia ora. Okay. Yeah, I just, um, you know, I've been to lots of these, well, nothing like this, Jerome. <laughs> but, you know, gatherings where we think about climate change and imagine, and they have been very different experiences today than to today. And I have been really present to all the work that everyone has been doing over the last, you know, five years, um, and I felt, at the, at the end of the day, I felt this incredible sense of being around and amongst amazing colleagues, you know, innovators, hard workers, we've all been doing it kind of alone, <laughs> um, and actually, we have done a really great job, and I feel like we're in a really good space, all of us have done so much work, and what comes next, and I really want to thank um, what you guys have done, the work that you've been doing in the Regenesis um, community. You created a beautiful quality of space here for us to be in today. It was quite distinct feeling to be here um, and to actually weave us together so we can see each other um, and feel that, you know, our, our action is built on the back of many actions and that we have manifest, we're, we're manifesting something really wonderful together. And seeing ourselves is really important because we can't do anything if we can't see it. So thank you. Kia ora. So kia ora everyone. Um, yeah, I don't need to tell you to continue the kōreros, yeah, uh, the conversations amongst yourselves. And,